to the list. All righty, live on Facebook. I can't get my video to go. Why isn't it not going? Page on manage. It keeps turning itself off. Start. I am your, your video does? Yeah, it keeps turning on and off on my end. Like it keeps shutting me off every time I try to turn it on. Hold on. I just replugged it in. There we go. Okay. Sometimes you gotta pl plug it back in. I look less tired now. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up because you're right, I did. <laughs> it's exhausting having your kids home all day, every day. That's what my real thing is I haven't stopped working on the weekends for over six weeks, except for the weekend I was sick. So I told everybody, no, next week I'm not working. Nobody can talk to me. I'm not doing anything. No projects. I'm not, because the following week is Vanessa's birthday. So I was like, so I can't cancel that one. Oh. <clears throat> Here to my groups. That goes by itself. Live. Yay. We're live streaming with you. Woohoo. Welcome to Marketing Monday Mixer. Hey, everybody. Let's make sure. Do you see me already? I do. <laughs> Yay. It's working. Juliet's in. She, she did it today. <laughs> I love that. I'm off the hook for having to manage the, uh, the live stream. <laughs> there you go. I'm trying to figure, there we go. Yay. I'm back. I must have written that nasty note to Facebook and, and got it worked out. <laughs> must have. So welcome to marketing Monday. <laughs> Woohoo. Today we're talking about my favorite subject, getting off the marketing roller coaster. <laughs> I hope you guys all checked out the funny graphic we had made. It's Juliet and I on a roller coaster, but a, car a caricature of the two of us. I really like your face on there. You look I scared. You know, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I look mean. You I do don't just out. look scared. I look kind of like fierce and mean. So anyway, but <laughs> that's <laughs> there you go. I got to get back here so I can start my little watch party, but welcome. So before we get started today, I want to thank a lot of you for showing up to Peace and Pivot. We're going to be having, uh, we'll talk about who's coming on it at the end of the show. But before we get into this, we need to talk a little bit about the beauty tips that were promised in last week's show. About uh -huh. That's right. I did promise them and I brought them, but I don't need them today though. Cause I was lucky enough to get my roots dyed over the weekend. <laughs> oh, oh you cheated. I did cheat. But last week, this is what I was using guys. I have, I've shared this like now on three different shows. Everybody, this is like the best stuff ever. It's called Goldwell Color Revive. And it's really cool. I love the packaging. Like I love good packaging. It's kind of my thing, but it, it's got a, uh, it's got a power thing in the bottom that, I mean, a little power, little power pad, I call it, in the bottom where um, it's got a, like, it's like a foam pad and you just tap it on the powder that's in the top of it 
and, uh, and then just tap it on your roots. So not only is it like great, you know, that spray stuff, that spray stuff, I totally hate because that spray stuff smells like baby powder to me. Like, have you ever done that where you do like dry shampoo and it smells like baby powder? Never yeah. done that before? Yeah. Oh, well, a lot of, a lot of you women out there are probably going, oh yeah, did, did, been there, done that. But it's the dryness of it that really works. But some of those sprays, the color sprays make your hair shiny. And it just looks weird to do it that way. And this one isn't. So it comes in all colors. Like there's blondes, there's gray, there's like different colors. I actually mix two colors together because I'm kind of picky about my hair color. Um, but I could tell you when you're sitting here on screen, like this is the thing you want to be confident. And if it's making you feel old and not confident, then that's not good. Like Juliet said, to, we were doing our little coaching call before and Juliet goes, wow, you look tired. I'm like, yeah, I feel tired. I better go. So I took five minutes before our call here and put my lipstick on and, you know, and brush my teeth and made myself feel just a little bit better. Comb my hair. Right. Because that helps you show up. Okay. So, so where do we get this magic? Cause I have roots, but I have blonde gray roots. So yeah, What's order wrong? it on Amazon. That's what I did, but get it. You can get it um, at any of the beauty supply places too. So um, if you don't have a license to it, like I think Sally Beauty, you don't need one, things like that. You can just go online to them directly rather than trying to get it through Amazon if it's backlisted. Because right now, Walmart's new report says beauty oh. products are on the rise. So we went through grocery hype, uh, tops, top tops for, you know, like clothing tops were on the rise for a while. Really? Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Because we're only seen from the waist up, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. But at my, at my next tip for all of you is wear pants, please. It's professional. Like that, the, the big <laughs> joke about that, that is not, don't do that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so now, and then uh, art, arts and crafts and education supplies came through and then now it's, we're on beauty products. Interesting. So Sally Beauty is not considered essential. They're not open. I think they should be, but they're not. No. That is so good. So here's my beauty thing. I now have <laughs> no dipping nails. So I am heavily yeah, take them off. Sally Hansen. Yeah. Because they were flaking. So I do like heavy duty nail. I haven't done my own nails in like 30 <laughs> years. So this is really tough. I'm like filing them and going, oh. that, That's my next weekend project, right? Like my next weekend project is to deal with my, my manicure and pedicure, right? So, but left. whatever it takes to make you feel confident in producing your content. Like that's, that's my goal with mentioning this tonight. It is not to derail us from our core subject, which is getting off the marketing roller coaster. But we got to be really strong in our marketing at all times and feel confident in it. So whatever that takes for you, go do it. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately... I'm in the glasses stage because my allergies are bonkers. We have beautiful oh. flowering trees in the backyard. So this is my month out of every year that my eyes run and my nose runs and I look like a meth addict with good teeth. <laughs> so I, you know, I have to, I have to wear glasses for a while because my contacts just itch. Oh, and you know, and that's, but you don't have the light thing going on in your glasses, which I'm seeing a lot of people who do it online. So really guys, double check your settings. It's not that hard. Really make sure that you're, um, you're, you're checking your settings before you get on and then you're self-conscious and you're doing this. Cause yeah. I see people they're doing, they're like trying to keep their glasses out of the frame. Right. <laughs> so just make sure that's not you do check it before. It's always a good idea to have a run through. Mm-hmm. I've actually had somebody on my podcast the other day that's like, I'm going to take off my glasses. And I'm like, okay, can you see? Like you right now, if I take off, <laughs> you're just blurry. Like I would never, everybody watch with your glasses off because then you can't even tell if Tracy colored her hair or not. I know, you really, you wouldn't know then. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, well, um, everyone, so we're talking about marketing roller coaster today. And the thing about the marketing roller coaster is that I used to use this term like long time ago. This is not just an economic roller coaster, okay? It applies to everything that you do. So what comes to mind, Juliet, when you think about things that have gone up and down in marketing for you, what's the number one thing? Oh gosh, probably the webinars. When we were doing webinars, like people were coming and then they weren't. And now they're coming to webinars again. But a lot of it is um, the actual, I don't want to say shiny objects, but like those shifts that aren't sustainable, like yes. they're, they're kind of, um, what would you call them? What is that thing? I'm, I'm old now. So I lose words, a trendy, they're trendy. <laughs> yeah. 
they're trending. Yeah, you trend up and trend down. But here's the thing, like I am not a fan of things that trend up and trend down over time that are not still measurable growth. So we do have dips and things like that, right? Like a roller coaster just wouldn't be fun if you didn't go like, right, at, at some point. But what we don't want to have is high, high highs and low, low lows that drop us below and make it so that we don't have steady growth overall. We're always right. going to be a wave. It's never going to always is be a trajectory straight up, right? It's always going to be a wave. But if over time that wave is not measuring a growth on the path up, then that then I want to rethink it. And that, and that's what I'm always looking for. But I, I turned at the marketing roller coaster a few years ago and I was talking about what happens is that we get busy marketing, then we get clients, and then uh, we stop marketing. Yeah. And we stop getting clients. And so this is, we're causing this. So that's what I want us to avoid when I talk about the marketing rollers is the roller coaster we cause ourselves by the shift in our consistency with what we do. Exactly. And that's, we're in control of that. We are not in control of what goes on economically. We're not in control of people attending, right? We picked a bad day. You know, we, we want to keep analyzing those and looking at those, but you know what? We're not in control of that at the end of the day. The only thing we can control is our consistency, our quality, the things that we do and the things that we choose to spend our time on. And so if we can, we can steady that. So it grows steady over time. It's sustainable. Wouldn't that be so much better? It would, because there's nothing worse than the barf coaster. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I have a nervous stomach um, when I get on, you know, uh, certain types of movements. I don't okay. do circular, that, that I definitely don't do. So, it's, yeah, so I don't like anything that's repetitive anyway, so I think it fits my personality in general, that I don't do circular. But you're right, this one, the ones that really make you go upside down, all around, like that's just not good for you. Right. And it's what you get before you get on as well. Like tequila and cotton candy, not a <laughs> foundation. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is what you put into it before, right? Exactly. So, so let's talk about some things that we still see slow and steady growth with and that things that have worked for strategies. And so I really think that the success in the business and the things that we have had for our business um, here at Potatize and what we do, uh, what I do in general, it was informed post 9-11. So it's what I, when I analyzed what happened in the business that I had back then, and I looked at it and said, when like things literally blew up, what worked and what didn't work? And should I do more of that? And how can I plan that in? Can I plan for this without being, you know, uh, you know, always planning for the worst case scenario, right? Like how can I be positive about my growth and positive about my marketing, but also still be realistic about things can happen, right? Mm -hmm. And how can I plan that out? So I'm always looking for that. And, the, and the, the key that we found that what saved us back then and what we built in early to every single venture we've done is diversification. Mm -hmm. And so I mean diversification in price point and diversification in type of services or products you provide. So by that, I mean, uh, you might have a recurring revenue item of subscription. You might have a high-end consulting packages like we have done for you setups. We might have production services so people are paying regularly and re renewing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we have multiple different, we have products and we have services. And so we have multiple different streams that we build in and many, many companies go in and they build one and then they build the next one and then they build the next one, right? And so once you know your market is in place, like you have the right consumer, then we build a bunch of products at once. That's what we learned from doing the product business is that if you had a catalog of things, you did better than if you had one thing and then try to follow it up a couple of years later with the next thing. Mm -hmm. And so because you can capitalize on the market you've created, but if you don't know your market, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that as an as out of the gate strategy. Exactly. But it, it really comes down when you talk about diversification, it's having multiple income streams. When you look at what's going on now, most of the people that had subscriptions, those are getting canceled because people don't want to pay that monthly right now. But if you had the other income streams coming in, that's not hurting you as badly as if you only had that subscription. That's why that's so important is to really have that diversified stream. Is it referrals or, you know, not even in, in exactly in your products, but is your referral stream coming in? Do you right. have money so, other places? 
Right. And so some of the strategies that we also look at from a diversification standpoint, and here now I'm going to shift from talking corporate diversification or your company diversification, your services, to talking marketing diversification, right? We were never solely dependent on my speaking out in, at events only. We always had a virtual component, a speaking component, a written component, a podcast component, a video. Like we had all of those things that were going on, but I wasn't doing all 12 things. Like, you know, I was only still doing one or two things myself. Everything else was how we repurpose or redistribute, right? Mm -hmm. So keeping in mind that that's the first thing you can control because you do have to market your business. So even if you're a startup, you've got to get the message out there, right? So you can control the diversification of that. You can control where you're connecting with people and you can make sure that that's spread out and that you have opportunities. So it's not like all of a sudden you have to say, I have to throw out all this event stuff I've been doing and start a virtual platform. No, you just go, okay, I was doing 60% events and 40% virtual. Okay, now I need to do 80% virtual and 20% events for plan for September, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, just be thinking about how you, how you are able to be flexible and nimble when the economic roller coaster starts happening around you or the conditions change. Right. I think another key too is your content. If you consistently are producing content in a time like this, when you need to be talking to people, I find my best tool is actually talking to people and then not expecting that they're going to purchase today but looking long-term into how I can serve them and help them. And so I can take those pieces of content. And if Tracy and I have a conversation about an area she's struggling in, I can take a piece of that and, and drop it into her LinkedIn or drop it into her Facebook and say, Hey, what a great conversation. You know, I was thinking about you and you know, would this be helpful for you? And I think that's a really great way when you're, you, you talked about consistently, if you're consistently producing something that you can help people with, find new ways to use and repurpose those pieces of content. Right. And so I also want to mention here that you're in this time when you have things that are trending, literally trending, right? It doesn't mean that you don't want to talk about them if they're relevant for you. So it, 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 I want to advise my clients on how to stay steady, right? That's why we're doing this episode, right? You know, you want to advise them on how to make sure that they're really getting good leads, right? So we want to make sure that we're still doing and being core consistent with what we're doing. But if we need to say in this day and age and or doing this virtually or start talking COVID, go ahead, okay? But don't think about switching that up to be opportunistic about the trends that are happening because it can backfire on you, right, Juliet? We both were talking about this earlier. It can really backfire on you. And one of the things that I just want to mention before we talk about some of the really opportunistic emails I've heard lately, um, that what I can see from some of the people who have been pushing out episodes on it, is that if it's truly relevant, in other words, they're, they're coaching people, like there's one I interviewed who's coaching people through sobriety. This is a mm -hmm. tough time. Yeah. She has to talk about this consistently and constantly right now, and she has to address what's happening. If you're, that's what your coaching programs are about, you're going to, to take it head on, and you're going to talk about that. But when you were doing stuff about business and now all you're talking about is healthcare in the middle of your show and, and different things like that, what ha I'm seeing happening is it's not tracking into subscribers. So they right. may, your, your episode may trend and people may say your show, but then they see that it's outside of the scope of the show. They don't subscribe. They're not fooled by that. Mm -hmm. So if you think tapping in opportunistically to this trend to get visibility is going to translate into a subscriber base for you or into clients, it's not working is what we're hearing again and again from people. If it is truly what your job is and what you're supposed to be providing people for, providing them comfort, providing them marketing information or whatever that is, and we're addressing the elephant in the room of what's going on here, do that. Mm -hmm. But to tap into it and to say, we're making COVID specials and we're having COVID, you know, COVID recoping events and, you know, and it's not a part of what you do, that's not working out really well. Well, not only that, I mean, we had Peace and Pivot this weekend, and for many of us on Saturday, 
Friday fit in. We found a way to fit in with the, you know, this is how you cope. But uh, one of the things I'm doing on my podcast is I am recorded clear out into June. So I've been as specifically saying to my guests, we don't even know when this comes out. So let's, let's avoid it. And I've been on several podcasts and radio shows lately where they've said the same thing. If you do this with the COVID right now, you're going to take your content from being evergreen into just being for this time. And you always want to make that content evergreen. Now let's talk about... But you can always, and I just want to say this from a coaching perspective to all of you out there, you can say things in a way that that when you talk about something, you say, this means more during any, during a quarantine, right? Or during any kind of, of, of stay at home that we may experience in the future or be experiencing today when you're listening to this. So you can give them that kind of uh, broader range, look at it yourself. Yeah, you, you absolutely can. But let's talk about some of those opportunistic um, one of the things I saw a month ago, right out the gate, that just drove me crazy were all these people saying, in order to survive in this online world, you have to have a summit and you need to pay me to show you how to build a summit. And that just drove me crazy because people were scared. They weren't sure where their next deal was coming from. And I think it really turned a lot of people off. And that's the kind of thing that's opportunistic that nobody wants to hear right now. Right. And what would have been better is for you to sit back and whoever that was who put that out there to sit back and say, you may be considering an online summit right now. And I'd love to invite you to a webinar or invite you to talk to me so you can decide re really whether or not this is reactionary or the right thing for your business. Mm -hmm. That's in, in keeping with trying to help making sure that you're being there as a sustainable source, as a steady growth source. Because what will happen is, is that if somebody takes that opportunity really quickly, right, they go in there and they, they check out that opportunistic and their gut reaction is doing it, they're operating from a place of fear. So there'll be a ton of regret. There will be a ton of inaction that comes from it or a ton of things that they have to rethink, haven't put in place, can't do, and they will not succeed and they will say that your program failed them. Well, not, not only that, think about how much work goes into a summit. We were really lucky this week because Scott Carson can throw one together in about five minutes. Because he's been doing it for a long time. He didn't just start doing it this week, right? So Elizabeth <laughs> and I were super lucky in that sense. But think about when, you, when you're learning how to do this, there are so many different elements. And I think if you guys watch some of these past episodes that we had Scott on, he has these lists of you know, 40 things. And a lot of them you have to learn how to do from scratch. So, I mean, when I first when I first heard those offers, I almost felt like that person who was offering it was coming from fear and playing on the fear of those people out there. Because I know that first week I was really reactionary in the sense that, oh my gosh, you know, what's going to happen to my business? And it turned out, it turned out okay. Once I, you know, got, took a deep breath. Yeah. Um, I really feel like those people who are out there doing that, there's so much to learn that you're right. People are going to fail and it takes a lot of planning. If you're not Scott, you can't put one together in five minutes. So, you know, are you looking to do this in June and will this be over by June and have I just wasted my money? So there's a lot yeah. of things to really think about there with the opportunity. Right. And I, I, you guys have heard me say this before. I'm a fierce unsubscriber. <laughs> like I, I, that's how I, I phrase it. That's exactly what I do. So I have a lot of clients who like are, and I have a lot of clients, right? So they all like, oh, sure. You should sign up for my program. And so uh, you know, or sign up for my email list. And so I do, but I have to be honest with you. Like I never see your emails because they go into a newsletter roll up, and, but I will check the headlines. Mm -hmm. So I will check them once a week when I have time, or sometimes I check them every couple of days and I will review the headlines. And if the headlines capture my attention are interesting, I will put it on my to read list and I will check it out and I will read it. So it's not that I never see it, but I have been, I have decided that when they come across and, and by the, if they for, have three COVID ones in a row, they're done. And I take them off my list. <laughs> Three That's COVIDs it. and you're out. Three yeah. COVIDs and you're out, right? I'm done with that. It's like, it's okay to mention it, but if that's your headline, it's baity. It's, mm -hmm. it's just total bait. And I hate that. 
And so when, you, you know, so it's gone. The only exception to that is Wendy Lipton Dibner. Do you know her? Yes, of course I know her. <laughs> Hers are hilarious. And I have to tell you, like, she's got the funniest. Like, my favorite is she had it in her newsletter and she put it on her Facebook. But she had these Easter bunnies that were getting masks put on that. And it was a thank you to the essential workers who are saving our essential products, like our, East, our chocolate Easter bunnies. We're getting masks. <laughs> it was hilarious. And I, like, I literally was crying laughing with it. So she's turned something, but she never puts COVID in her titles. So like she would never fall into my world. But, but she's talking about, you know, she taps into it. And that's her job. That's her role is to make sure that she creates sustainable businesses that can survive this. Mm -hmm. And so, but in doing it, she's got her sense of humor still there and, you know, and her wit is coming through and why would I unsubscribe to that? Of course, she's on my to read list every week, right? So thinking about how you can do it to continue to show up that's authentic, that's right, that's not opportunistic, that's our steady marketing. It will always be your steady marketing. Do you mention those things? You mention them, but you don't bait with them. Right. That's right. not You're steady. That's a way to get yourself unsubscribed. Yeah. You're not the news media. You right. can't bait and switch on us. <laughs> right. So now slow and steady, like how do we then say, yeah, slow and steady, but I, I need it now. I, I'm, I'm desperate. I need to make sure I still keep clients in and I, and I lost my, my event revenue and what am I going to do now? And so how can I move that up faster? How can I create a, a faster increase? You can serve more. Yeah. Right. You can serve more. And so, you know, this is some of the things that I've been systematically going through and rewarding action in my system. So we were just talking about this earlier, that I have people who take our boot camp, and it's free. I made it free now for, for anyone who's going through it right now. So if you want to take the boot camp, it's totally free. If you show up and you, you sign up for it and you start to make, take steps, you're making action, and you get through 75% or more, I invite them into our coaching group for free. So I'm allowing them more access to us because they're taking action. So they're doing something. So I want to invest in their success. And so if there's anything that you can do where you can give more. So I don't have people, on, you know, shutting down their feeds, right? Like that would be, we, we have a recurring revenue stream, right? Where people are, are subscribed to our hosting packages, which is what streams them out to iTunes and Stitcher and all, and Spotify and, and all of those places out there, right? So they could come to us and they could say, I want to take it. I want to move it to a free service because I, I don't want to spend money. I don't want to spend $49 a month. And, but they aren't. Why? Because they're also getting four free coaching calls a month with that. They're included in that. They have the ability to ask me questions. They can talk to us. We, we're providing really great value. We've been providing them really great people who we think provide great services, like Juliet, like uh, Whitney, uh, Whitney Lortzen, and Allison uh, Melody, who did our social media um, in our coaching group. That was fantastic social media tips that they gave. So we have people like that that we're bringing to them. So they trust us already. So if you can add things to your subscribing list, if you can give them greater, deeper services that help them through so that they don't have to spend money on something else, you may find you can keep your revenue stream from that. Mm -hmm. So look at ways at which you can serve the ones who are taking action, who've been with you, go to your customer base first and always mind that, always make sure that you're there serving them, helping them, growing them, finding out why, what's going on with them. That's what we do first. We don't say, oh my gosh, well, I better get new clients. We, you know, we say, no, we spent a lot of time and effort getting these clients going, getting them where they are. We got to keep helping them so that they can stay successful. And because it costs, and you guys have heard this, it costs a whole lot more to get a new client than it does to keep the ones you have. Absolutely. And they need you right now. So don't abandon them. Absolutely true. We actually, we just finished up our first, our group program from the beginning of the year. And we're starting again in May. And we've been live streaming and giving, even the people who've gone through the boot camp, they're getting it inside of our Facebook group. And, uh, and here's, here's something I want to just say from a scarcity standpoint. Um, you know, Tracy just talked about, you know, people are freaking out. I have to go get new clients. That's sort of a scarcity mindset. You know, yes, your event may have been canceled and you may be desperate, but if you're labeling yourself desperate, you really have a scarcity mindset. The truth is you can share a ton of your content, like these group programs and the, the program Tracy's talking about. You can share them for a free because 99.9% .9 of the people will not take action. 
But, you know, there are going to be a lot of people who sign up and then they go sit on the couch and watch Netflix and eat chocolate. So I love the fact that you're rewarding the people who are taking action and actually growing during this time period. Right. And I think so many of us, we don't realize how to use the tools we already have. Right. So we don't really, really understand that, you know, we've been paying for this subscription to HubSpot or the subscription to Infusionsoft or Constant Contact or whatever the ones that we're using. What is yours, active campaigns or something like that? I'm using that, but I'm actually looking at cultivating sales. I'm spending cultivating sales. Right. Your system. But what we aren't doing is remembering that so many of them have deep resources already within them. Like, um, you know, we we just had Nate Hirsch on a couple of weeks ago onto one of our coaching and he's reminding us that he has so much free resources on hiring VAs and being successful this and they're all those resources are in a thing that you already belong to. Mm -hmm. So we're out there trying to seek new sources and we don't know if we can trust those sources yet right? Are they just taking advantage of the, of what's going on? But those that have been there for us, don't discount them. Go back to them and say, Hey, what have you got? Cause I guarantee you, they'll be more than happy to send you. Oh, we've got a whole video series. We've got master classes. We've got this, they've got it. And they're more than willing to send it to you. Why? Because you're their client. You've been their client. You've worked with them before and they want to nurture those relationships. They don't want to lose them right now. So making sure that you reach out to the people who are already doing business with you or you've done business with recently, ask them what they've got because you know you got value once. You're going to continue to get it again. Don't forget that. We don't have to go to someone new. It's not novel. Those people are still in business for a reason, right? So one of the places I just want to give a shout out because I can see her on the Facebook on the Facebook watch party. Carolyn Edlin, she has a fantastic blog program that's targeted at audience uh, at artists learning how to market. My mom introduced me to it. My mom, Rosemary Davio, is an artist. She's got amazing art. Her gallery shut down right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and she just got featured in Carolyn's artsy shark, which is the name of it. Artsy shark, uh, featured artists online, which then sent her people to her website, which then sent her people asking her questions about her art, which then got her started doing an Instagram, which she's loving. And she's actually posting new Instagram in it. So like it's helped my mother move forward into a world that she wasn't comfortable in. But artsy shark has been doing that for, I don't, I don't, I want to say like at least six plus years, maybe longer. Carolyn typed that in the chat. I'll, I'll be happy to if I'm wrong, but I think it could almost be a decade that she's been blogging and doing this and sharing marketing and financial management tools with artists. Why wouldn't you go back to the one person who has served you so well over the years, right? Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you keep going back to them and getting and get asking for more from them? So they're there for you. Use them get information from them and go back to the people you trust the most instead of responding to these fear-based ads, these fear-based emails, these things that aren't working. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the best way to stay off the marketing roller coaster. It is. I think another one too is, is really looking at some new things. Uh, One of my clients, Kathy Guggenhauer, um, you know, she trains VAs how to get online and do things like that. It, even if you don't think you're going to have an online business, but you're curious about it, this might be the time to sign up for something like that and, and learn. Because I think that's part of that sustainability. If you have been offline and you're thinking about online, there's no reason to run out and jump into it a day, today. But as long as you have this downtime and you're growing check it out and learn the right way and really get out there and see, is this something I want to do before you do that whole bootstrap your way to bankruptcy online model that so many people have gone through. Keep your day job, have that going. You have downtime, expand a little bit and dip your toes in and see if this is something you really want to do. Yeah. And for those of you out there who have organizations or companies or other things, and you'd been doing events. So you guys were organizing the events. You were the people who did all of that. And now you're saying, well, who do I have on my virtual summit? And what do I do? Don't forget to go straight back to the people you would have had otherwise. They all 
always have the great content. So, you know, I, uh, I'm doing next week, Betsy Westhafer, for Tony Bodo. They're having a, a virtual summit and it's more focused on that sort of corporate client, those with employees and customer service issues and things like that. And I love their audience and, and it's perfect because they have this book profitability. Like, so it's like a really important topic right now. And the way that they're talking about all of that and they're, they've, changed the summit is they went straight back to the people they know knew would talk to the right audience like so they knew the audience they were going to attract and they went straight to the people not who was available not who they could access they went straight to the people who they said this content's going to be very valuable for our audience so it was always still an audience first model which is what they would have done if they'd done a live event Mm -hmm. So thinking about it from that perspective, like making sure that you're making decisions on your marketing, on, on the things that are going to move you forward, making sure that you're making them from the place of really, truly, deeply understanding your marketing goals and your mission, your end result. Absolutely. So hopefully that was super helpful. Uh, next week, next week, we actually, uh, over the weekend, we had the Peace and Pivot uh, event, the summit. And we had a really great panel, uh, Heather Rogers, uh, Silicon Valley, uh, and Magician came on and talked about changes that they've made, the pivots that they've made. It was kind of cool. She did some magic right on screen, but she's doing a lot of virtual events. And uh, Ross Halleck from Halleck Vineyards just made this incredible pivot that has really worked out for him as well. So we want to share that with you guys because there's nothing better than hearing really inspirational stories. And the um, the actual pan panel, we talked a little bit about where we think corporate is going now that they know their people can work from home. Is that a big overhead savings? Yeah, it's such a great topic. And I'm really glad you did that because sometimes we have things that happen in your event. And you and I talked about this because of the time of day, they didn't get quite as much traffic at a, as at a different time. And so a really great topic didn't take the, it didn't get the visibility that it should. So that's why Juliet and I said, no, we got to bring them back. And we we're asked them some new questions because it's for you and our audience is different. So we're going to ask them some different questions. But we, we got to make sure that when we do these events and we're running them ourselves, when we see something that got buried, that didn't get the exposure that it should, revive it, bring it out, make sure that it wasn't just, you know, <laughs> you know that, that it gets the exposure that it absolutely should. So, you know, this is a repurposing thing, but we're, we're also going to reframe it for all of you on Marketing Monday Mixer. So Exactly. And for you guys who missed it, uh, Rhonda Britton, who was Oprah Winfrey's life coach was amazing she gave away a free program so if that's something you would like the recording please put something down in the box below the live whether it's mine or tracy's and we'll be glad to send that the link to that recording out super inspiring when you hear her story and you know what she's done we had probably the most people show up for that particular event with questions because they she really, was brilliant she was fantastic and i actually opened that that fearless program she gave away and I worked on it a little bit yesterday and it, it's really amazing. So, well, you seem very Zen when I talked to you today. So something's working there. I'm always, you, you know, got a lot more peace after, you know, I, I don't think that I've ever seen you, Juliet, come off of like doing an event like that. And where it wasn't just like, oh gosh, I got to de-stress now. No, today I'm talking to you and you're like way more calm and I'm all exhausted. <laughs> you know what, Scott, Scott did a tremendous amount of, of that work. And there were some things that got moved around and, and I don't know what's gone on with this time period, but you know, normally I'm like, who died and left me master of the universe? I have to like, you do this and you do, I'm such a good delegator. I don't do any work. I just delegate. But um, <laughs> it was funny last week because I would get in the this, like who changed that and then I'd be like you know what does it matter <laughs> it'll, all, it'll all work out and that's kind of been my attitude the last month and it it's really serving me I'm not I'm not anxious like I thought you know when you're controlling everything you're so anxious so um yeah it's almost like I'm drinking without drinking <laughs> <laughs> well go get the fun part it's our mixer right no, it's time for the mixer no, I can't do that I don't keep my clothes on it's really it's so sad. <laughs> well yeah we better get off live stream nobody then. wants to <laughs> we don't want to get you shut down on Facebook again <laughs> oh, no I better be quiet huh? <laughs> well anyway I hope everyone I hope you'll be back with us next week and check out that panel because I know you're gonna love it um and it's it's 
we are going to just talk about some really cool pivots and some cool things that are going on that'll give you ideas. And that's our goal here at Marketing Monday Mixer is to give you some thoughts, give you some ideas, talk about what's working and what's not working. If you guys have things you'd like to hear, we're starting to plan for May right now. So start to send us some topics, send us some things you'd like us to cover. And if we don't, ha if we can't answer it, we will invite an expert on for you. Will we? No, yeah, just absolutely. Yeah, I think <laughs> we have to. Answers? I think we totally have to get Allison and Whitney on uh, next month. Okay, so you're well, gonna have some fun with them because I thought their their insights were brilliant. Okay, sounds so. good. Thank you guys. Okay, everybody, have a great Monday. Bye bye.